delusion that's true um the drug addict bad example but the the drug addict has um in his mind the, the most important thing in life is to is to take his drug of choice um and and for him that's very real and then later when he finally if he finally quits then he sees the folly of of that and how ridiculous it was but in, until that moment he doesn't see the so anyway, that's a bad example. In Vardenkar, by the way, we we do not um, allow uh, members to, to do drugs. It's it's not you can't join if if you do illegal drugs or even marijuana if it's legal in your state because it interferes with your um, your consciousness in in some some very negative ways. Not to mention the physical. But I'm not going to get into a debate over that. Um, that's you know. But we don't. We ask that no that no members do drugs and if you do drugs you know if you're not willing to quit then then don't join because it's just not it's just dangerous uh to to mix out-of-body travel with with any kind of drugs mind-altering drugs so anyway moving on <laughs> uh, i've reached that subject um and i know i might get some debate over it that's fine i, I really don't want to debate it I, I just mentioned it as as an aside um and we've all been th through these various um well, actually, this goes into the five passions of the mind. One of the tools that the negative power uses to try to keep trap soul or keep soul in these lower worlds is the five passions or perversions of the mind. That They are lust, anger, greed, attachment, and vanity. And these are various, very insidious passions. Now, I don't want to leave the impression that we must be perfect in order to reach God because this is a huge um there's a huge mistake here, a huge misunderstanding. The idea that you got to be perfect, and once you're perfect, your behavior is perfect, your your physical body is perfect, you're a vegetarian, you do this, you do that, you do all these things on the outer, and then then finally, when you've got it right, when you've got your act together, as they say, then then you go for God, you know, after you've got it. But you know, as Jesus said, we don't follow Jesus in Varden Car, but as Jesus said, you know, uh, seek God, and all things will be given unto you. And this, this is really true, that we seek self and God realization in this lifetime. And that, that is the source. It's, it's like linking up with this, the God self and with God, um, not talking about it, thinking about it, reading about it. I mean, those things are all steps. You know, those are steps to, to actually leaving your body and having the realization uh, the self-realization and the God realization. So we go through these various levels, and once we become a member of Vardenkar, once or once we decide we, we want to make that step of moving out of the body into these various states, you know, and then reaching into the soul plane or the the Atma Lok, which is another name for the soul plane, um, realizing, uh, meeting the ruler Satnam, who's the first manifestation of the true god um the pure positive god not not the the the, the mental the male persona you know with the white robe and the beard uh who's who's a mixture of matter energy space and time and mind mostly mind but the but the true god um the hure which is indefinable can only be experienced this is you know we we he, it is truly our father and we are soul. We're a drop from this ocean of love and mercy. We're a part. We, we do not lose our individuality. A lot of, of some of the spiritual paths, like the Buddhists, um, I believe they they talk about becoming, you know, kind of like call it scattered throughout the universe. You know, you lose your individuality. You just become absorbed into this this great void. And it's kind of interesting. There is a void, but it's not in. It's, it has really little to do with God. There's various voids between the lower worlds, and, and the highest void is actually between the etheric plane and the soul plane, or the Atma plane. And it's the last uh, dividing line before we reach the pure positive worlds, the first of the pure positive worlds, the, the soul plane, or the fifth plane. So there is this void, and it's described as, as a tremendous amount of energy. It's, it's black. And it appears there's nothing there. And, and some people will have experiences in this void. And they will say um, that God is nothing. <laughs> you know, you just absorb. You just, you just become one with the universe and, and lose your individuality. And, and there's all this, this mythology. 
and this kind of ties in with meditation. The problem with meditation is it's passive. It's not active. And we need to leave our bodies, if we have any hope of reaching um, the higher states of consciousness, uh, self-realization, God-realization, or you know, even the mental realization um, on the mental plane, which is not really a goal, but it's, it's, a, it's a stepping stone. If we really want to get into, but it, especially the God worlds, we need to learn to leave our bodies, which is very natural and safe, we need to leave our bodies through a series of spiritual exercises. And then we, we can have these experiences ourselves. And then we're in the state of seeing, knowing, and being. Now, making contact with this spirit, this light and sound of Varden, the master, the inner master, there's a, two sides to the master. There's the outer master, uh, which is myself, um, who gives lectures, talks, writes books, discourses, etc., etc., and then there's the inner master, which is really um, the inner part of myself, but it's also spirit. Um, this is very hard to describe. Um, the inner part is, the outer part is obviously very limited. Uh, it's, you know, it's a limited, it's just, it's a human body. It's a human, very, these various bodies. The outer part, the inner part, I'm sorry, um, is unlimited, because we're de we're dealing with pure spirit. We're dealing with consciousness, and the purpose of the uh, the living Varden Master, uh, or the Margatma, the living Varden Master, is to bring soul back to its home, to aid soul in returning back home to God, which is the the um, the God realization, which takes place from the the Anami Lok, the tenth plane, up up through the Hure Lok. Or the Hure world, I should say the Hure world and the the Hure itself, the ocean of love and mercy, on the twelfth plane. And of course, th there is no limit to the number of planes above this, but there's really no point in talking about it. Um, you really have to experience these various uh, levels, these various planes or worlds of heaven, and have those experiences for yourself. And the spiritual travel or the master, there are many there are many masters in Vardenkar. Um, their job is to help you, um, guide you through these various levels because there's a lot of pitfalls and confusion, much as if you're, if you're going to a trip to Africa or some other continent, um, it would be very wise to have a guide, especially if you didn't speak the language, but even if you did speak the language, um, otherwise you end up in the wrong part of town, as they say, as the slang goes, um, or, or lost, and, and it's even, it's much, much more important when you're dealing with these various planes because they're so large and there's so many pitfalls and traps and it's very easy to get caught up in, in part of the astral plane and, you know, you move from the from the mid-astral to the high astral and it's like a completely, it seems like a completely different place, although um, you're still in the astral. There's just so much confusion and there's so much illusion in these planes. But these are the planes of reincarnation. And this is something that most people don't know. Most people think reincarnation is just in the physical plane. And, and, and a lot of reincarnation is in the physical plane. And that's, in the, that's a subject that's important. We go through these various lifetimes. And I started to allude to that. You know, the cycles of the Zodiac, the Varden Vidya, uh, these various cycles that soul goes through. There's also a, uh, what we call yugas, which are like, for example, the Golden Age, the Silver Age, the Copper Age, the Iron Age. And these yugas progressively get more and more negative as they go. In the Golden Age, things are pretty, pretty, pretty nice. I mean, there's no wars. Uh, you, you basically, if, you, if you're hungry, you just go to a tree and pick some fruit off of it. And things are pretty nice, um, like the Garden of Eden described. Um, and that and that's a it's a real it's a much more friendly place to be although it's certainly not heaven uh it, some people might describe it as heaven on earth which it's not heaven but um but then you move into the next stage and the next stage and as it each age is a little shorter um the golden age is quite long um i can't remember the exact number but it's 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 over a million years i believe um and then it gets shorter and shorter and shorter as it goes. And the Iron Age, which we're in now, the Kali Yuga, um, Kal native, 
power is a power also the negative power um in charge of the lower worlds that that keeps soul trapped here um the kali yuga is is the worst of, of these stage of these cycles and so soul is it, a lot of people talk about heaven on earth a lot of that is because they remember the the golden age and the silver age um the Silver Age was very nice, too. Not as nice as the Golden Age, obviously. Anyway, um, moving on. So we, re we remember these various ages, and some people just long to return to the Golden Age or the Silver Age when things were easier, you know, and the Golden Age people weren't, there wasn't really much illness, and, and things were just really, really nice. A lot of people to this day will talk about things like Atlantis and Lemuria and, and, and there's longing in their face, you know, like, why can't we be in that, you know, instead of here, you know, in this Iron Age, you know. Um, so there's a lot of misconception about that. And some people try to create heaven on Earth, um, try to make Earth their, their, their heaven. And this is part of the illusion. And there's nothing wrong with, with improving your circumstances in life or improving. There's nothing wrong, certainly nothing wrong with feeding poor people or helping the, the planet in some way, as long as you're detached from it, as long as you understand that this is not your true home. This is not soul's true home. This gets into the subject of, a little bit into the subject of the difference between being a conscious co-worker with the Hure or God and being a do-gooder. Um... There's nothing inherently wrong. Well, the problem with being a do-gooder is you're not conscious. You're, you're just going around trying to help people. And this is really a negative goal. I know it sounds like a really positive thing, but you're going around trying to help people. You feed somebody, you do this, you do that. And it's it certainly creates some good karma, talking about karma and reincarnation. But you're still dealing in the area of the lower world. You're still dealing with karma. You're dealing with creating good karma rather than creating bad karma. You know, you're balancing the books. You're doing things that you think will help somebody. You don't. But there's a difference between being con a conscious coworker where you're following the will of the Varden or the Holy Spirit, so that you you and it, in a sense, are one. You you're. You are you are spirit. You are the Varden, and the Varden is you. Or you are sp the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is you, because as so we are. Um, we simply, we simply are. We have this beingness, which is, which is the God, the God spark. Um, so there's a difference, um, and the difference is is really consciousness and surrender. You know, being versus being an actor. You know, part of the problem with being a do-gooder is we, we it tends to turn people into actors where they're they're playing a part. You know, it's like in the movies. You know, okay, you're gonna be this this really good guy. You know, and you're gonna feed people and take like a percentage of your your income and buy food and then go over to the soup kitchen and do this and do that and and so you be so it's external to ourselves. And, it, and, it, and like I said, it's not a bad thing. It's certainly better than going out and waging war with people, usually.